Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at adaptation strategies used to cope with the impacts of climate change. This is part of Paper 1, Unit A, The Challenge of Natural Hazards. We can try to reduce the impact of global climate change in two ways, by mitigation or by adaptation. Mitigation strategies limit the cause of the issue. In this case, they reduce or prevent greenhouse gas emissions and protect valuable carbon sinks. These strategies can be on a local or global scale, for example, investment into renewable energies. Adaptation strategies are where people respond to the impacts of climate change by adjusting how they live or work in order to make themselves less vulnerable. These strategies are local as they respond to localised impact. For example, building homes on stilts in area, areas where there has been an increase in sea level and therefore an increase in the risk of flooding, or by planting drought resistant seeds in areas of low rainfall. We've covered climate change mitigation in the previous two videos. This video focuses on climate change adaptation. The first way that people are having to adapt is to cope with changes to farming. Scientists predict that climate change will have a huge impact on food supply across the globe. More frequent and intense extreme weather events such as flooding and droughts and the increase in pests and diseases will make farming very difficult. Farmers may see their yields drop, so they need to adapt to these changes. There are lots of adaptations that farmers can make around the globe, such as introducing new cropping patterns by altering the planting and sowing dates, and by using drought resistant seeds which will tolerate longer periods without rainfall. Although drought resistant seeds are expensive, so they are not always appropriate for the farmers who need them the most. Farmers can also invest in more efficient irrigation systems and they can learn about water harvesting techniques. Finally, farmers can plant trees to protect seedlings from strong sunshine by providing shade. However, it will be much more difficult for farmers in developing nations to adapt to climate change. At the 2015 Paris Accord, rich nations agreed to financially support poorer nations with adaptation strategies. Unfortunately, this money was nowhere to be seen when COP26 took place in Glasgow in 2021, but it was finally agreed as part of the 2027 COP negotiations that were held in Egypt. The second way that people are having to adapt is to cope with issues around water supply. Drought and flood events have already become more frequent and more severe due to climate change. This leads to unreliable rainfall and periods of water insecurity, both in terms of water quantity and quality. This will affect people living in rural areas of developing nations more than anyone else. There are two ways to manage water supply, reducing demand and increasing supply. London is a rich city but is in the driest part of England with the highest demand for water. By 2030, all homes in London should have been offered a free retrofit package of water efficient appliances, such as washing machines and dishwashers. These will all use less water and they will make water conservation easier. London Thames Water have also opened a desalinisation plant in Beckton to increase water security in the capital city, similar to the one that you can see on the screen. This plant takes water from the River Thames and it turns it into drinking water through the process of reverse osmosis. It removes water at low tide as the water has a lower salt content then. However, this desalinisation plant is expensive and it uses a lot of energy. In low income countries and newly emerging economies, the ways to manage water supply tend to be much smaller scale. A really good example of this is the Artificial Glacier Project in Ladka in India. Here rivers are fed by snow and glacial melt and this is used by millions of people for domestic use and farming. However, most of the 16,000 glaciers are retreating as a result of global warming. This means that in the long term the water supply may be threatened. 
As a result, the Artificial Glacier Project has been developed and it uses a system of diversion canals and embankments to collect water. This freezes in winter, forming an artificial glacier, which then provides water in the spring when it melts. The third way that people are having to adapt is to cope with rising sea levels. Sea levels have risen on average by 20 centimetres since 1900 and are expected to rise further between 26 and 82 centimetres by 2100. This will lead to widespread flooding across low-lying countries such as Bangladesh and Vietnam and will wipe out crops. We will also see higher rates of erosion along coastlines, more damage from storm surges and an increase in saltwater contamination of fresh water supplies. One city at risk from sea level rise is London. In 1982, the Thames Barrier was constructed to stop tidal surges coming up the Thames and into London. Since then, it has been closed over a hundred times. When it was designed, it was expected to be breached one, once every 1,000 years. However, if sea levels rise here by 50 centimetres, the risk of breach would increase to once every 100 years. However, other places are far less resilient against sea level rise. For example, the Maldives, a group of tiny islands in the Indian Ocean, which is pictured on the screen. The Maldives are extremely low lying with the highest point at just 2.4 metres above sea level. The 380,000 inhabitants have a really uncertain future as sea levels rise, as some climate models suggest that the islands may be uninhabitable by 2030 and completely submerged by 2070. The Maldivian government famously filmed an underwater cabinet meeting with the government in scuba, scuba gear over a decade ago to share their plight with the globe. They are now focusing on many different adaptation strategies, such as the construction of sea walls, for example, with a three metre sea wall built round the capital of Mali. And sandbags have been used to reinforce other areas. Houses have been built on stilts so they won't flood if the water level rises and mangrove swamps have been restored. These are a great way to protect inhabitants from storm waves as a tangled roots trap sediment. Raised artificial islands have been constructed and there has also been a discussion about relocating the entire population to Sri Lanka or India. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on adaptation strategies used to cope with the impacts of climate change. Thank you for watching.